Hi folks, this is a video on air compressors. So if you're not interested in nerding out on why we bought a screw compressor and why you shouldn't buy a screw compressor, don't watch this. So here she is, Atlas Copco. They call it a GX5, terrible naming scheme because it's actually a seven and a half horsepower uh, rotary screw compressor. If you don't know what a rotary screw compressor is, take a look at this little cutaway they had, which was kind of cool when we picked it up. But, um, and I'm not gonna do a super technically good job of explaining it, but there's two really precise machine uh, screws that rotate together uh, or, or in line and they force the air tighter continuously. So that's the big difference, honestly, and why they're so much quieter is a piston compressor is causing the air to be concussed, I guess, as it's pushing it up and down. There's massive, um, it's like punching air and creating these sound waves. Whereas these things are just turning nice screws sort of nice and calmly um, and they can produce, well, so it's actually a misconception that I had at least, which is that they don't produce more air. Uh, the, the per horsepower, they're about the same as our you know, this is a five horsepower, but our uh, piston two-stage polar guy. So we learned a ton in the process of buying this, and I just wanted to share with you guys, uh, there's a lot of things we love about it. There's some things that we don't like or why we wouldn't recommend it for some people. First off, I'm just gonna say, it, they're friggin' expensive. Holy cow. Uh, in this video, I also wanna talk about the rapid air system that we used to do all the airdrops in our shop. And it is great, um, it is also not cheap. Although there you don't necessarily have uh, a, a cheap option other than I guess black pipe. Um, with the screw compressor, you do have a cheaper option and that's to go back uh, to a piston. But uh, ballpark, a screw compressor like this, like six to seven grand, uh, which is you know easily three times, if not four times what a good piston compressor would cost. So they're friggin' expensive. Um, so why spend that money? This is gonna be my shop for a long time. I work long hours, I've got other people here. So there's a combination of things, which is safety, um, hearing safety, you know, not having the loud noises uh, deteriorate your hearing. Also, there's a safety aspect that I can be somewhere else in the shop and I can hear other machines running. That's really important to me. Now, I'll be honest, I'm starting to realize that may not last forever because I've got Jared here, we are picking up a summer intern where if multiple machines are running, I can't necessarily hear what mine is doing when I walk away. Then the other two things were training classes. Again, we, I want to talk to my students. When we got people here, I don't want to talk over a loud piston compressor. And lastly, we make videos. It's nice to have something that's a lot quieter when we're trying to film. Um, I thought ours was going to come with a computer and it didn't. That's probably the one thing I was a little bit uh, frustrated about. I never realized that. And I know that the next unit size up sh can or should come with a computer. And why does that matter? Well, it goes back to one of the sort of more complicated things with piston compressors or with screws, which is that they want to either be on like all the time or off a bunch. They don't do well coming on and then coming off. So what you do with the computer is, um, let's say you've got a hundred gallon tank. You have it fill up that tank, but instead of kicking off when it gets to 140 PSI in that tank, it actually stays on for however much time you program in the computer, let's say another 30 seconds, and it's just, it's like on bypass mode. It's just pushing that air out into the atmosphere because if you're consuming a bunch of air, let's say you've got a bunch of rotary tools going or a blast cabinet, and within that 30 second, you know, extra time, your tank drops back below the threshold to kick on, say 100 PSI, well then your motor, the screws, have never shut off. And that's a better way to run a screw compressor. I've gotten mixed answers on why that is. You know, what is so hard about the start stop? Is it wear and tear on the screw? Is it just electrical, uh, inefficient electrically? And I haven't really gotten a great answer on that. I, at the end of the day, I'm not too worried about it. Um, for us. What, what is interesting though is you kind of want to either size one so that it runs continuously, which is not possible for us because we actually don't really use a ton of air. Uh, you know, our plasma, so the blast cabinet, but you know, our Tormach machines, they use air for just blowing parts off, low air for the coolant. You guys kind of get that. 
or you buy one that's so big and has so much extra storage, like you plumb in a couple extra tanks, that it only has to turn on every 10 or 15 minutes. Well, something I also learned is in the screw, there's oil because there has to be oil there to lubricate the screw, which is bad because your air is contaminated with oil. So after it comes out of the screw, there's an oil separator, which works, but um, I guess one of the things I wanted to say in, in when I published this video is that unfortunately, the thing that stinks about a screw compressor is it's not like you're throwing a bunch of money at something and getting the perfect design. They're not whisper quiet. They mix, you know, they still produce some moisture in the air. They have oil um, in the water that, or the air that has to get separated. So not, not at the end of the world, but worth noting. Um, the other thing, if you buy one of these is they get, one way they get you is you have a, you know, some two, three, five year warranty, but to keep that warranty, you've got to send in oil samples and you've got to use their oil and filters. Sort of a fair trade-off, um, as you can suspect, some of those parts, including even getting the oil sample kit, aren't free. So if you're gonna buy one of these, figure out what those cost and see if you can negotiate them up front, maybe to include the first or second year's worth. Um, you gotta check the oil regularly on the thing. That's, in some respects, no different than any piece of equipment. I guess I just wanna mention that for us, at least, this is one of our first big boy pieces of equipment where you got to kind of pay attention to the maintenance on it and really you know if something went wrong it would be it would be devastating simply because it's expensive um, the other point is there because the oil mixes with the screw there is a natural way for oil to leave the system now it shouldn't be a problem and i think they said to kind of you'll know it if there's oil getting mixed in with your air but it's not a sort of sealed self-contained type system uh, ours has a built-in dryer which seems to work great um, no complaints about that the air has been really dry although it hasn't gotten hot here yet we've also tried to put some thought into designing our system to help with that uh, the other thing this model it's a wet tank meaning the air goes through the screw into the tank wet and then when it comes out of the tank it goes into the dryer and goes out to our system. So I don't know why that is. I know some of the bigger units, the tank is quote unquote dry, uh, which I think I would rather have because now, you know, every day on the way out or way in, I'll just turn this little knob and you can just see, dump some uh, water into the tank. I need to put an auto drain on this. The other tube here is from the auto drain from that dryer, and that already has a float valve in it, so it takes care of itself. Um, couple fun tidbits. If you are interested in a piston compressor, because these things are too expensive, I don't blame you, a uh, couple things to look at. Eaton, who made actually our Polar Air right there, has a new Whisper series, and I really um, took a hard look at that, and in some respects, um, it, it would probably be a great way to go. They're supposed to be pretty darn good. Um, they have, I believe, some sort of a built-in silencer or baffle box for the intake, which again is where you get so much of your noise from a piston compressor. So check out those. The other thing is there's lots of folks who have done stuff to quiet down pistons with silencers, baffle box, moving the intakes, um, the air intake outside and keeping the compressor inside, putting the compressor outside, putting the compressor in its own little room. Uh, lots of interesting things to do. They all actually have some drawbacks and hassle factors and so forth. Um, that was my sort of list on, um, on the screw compressor stuff. The uh, last thing I wanted to talk about briefly was our airlines. And I want to give a big shout out to Cleveland Tool. I put their link in the video description. They hooked us up with the rapid air system it just drop ship, so they were just sort of the distributor, but they were great to work with, um, and they gave us a little bit of a break since we did buy, uh, I think, a fair amount of it. The piping isn't too expensive. Um, they do kind of get you when you go to buy the all the joints and the couplers and so forth. So this was tough because we this took a lot longer. It's called fast pipe, but holy cow, um, it was anything but fast. Uh, now, in fairness, we did run something like 600 feet of it around all of these walls and the drops. And I didn't want to, um, I wanted to do it correctly because, you know, I don't necessarily need air down in that far corner right now, but I wasn't gonna do the system 
you know, halfway and finish it later. So I'm glad that we got it all done. Here's what the stuff looks like. It's basically just an aluminum extrusion that has this blue uh, coating around it. So nothing too fancy. It's supposed to do a really good job of uh, wicking out moisture. Um, it's, it is easy to fasten together and to add joints and so forth. So no complaints about that. Um, I originally had said I was going to do copper and then I priced out copper and I realized, oh my God, I am not going to do copper because that is really, really, really expensive. If you do the fast pipe, uh, I'm going to tell you, you do not have an option. Do not buy the little black things that go right into your walls like we did right there. We started with those. The problem, especially in block, is it's really hard to get the hole exactly where you want it and you have no flexibility. So we did like one, two, three, four, five, six of those, actually a couple more. And then I realized, nope, 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 not doing that. We switched to their strut clamps. They're cheap and they are great. So I bought some strut, I painted it white to kind of have it look nice. And then these strut clamps let us um, adjust everything a little and easier to take it off and easier to, um, sorry, it's more secure. I, this is going to hold the pipe better than that plastic clamp. So I really emphasize that. We took everyone's advice and we put in quite a few ball valves throughout the system and that'll let us, whoop, that'll let us isolate sections. Um, so if we need to work on one or we have a leak, uh, I think that was the right call. We debated a lot on the whole flow of the system and everyone was talking about drops and low points and um, you know, taking the air. You know, so when we come down for a drop, like over there, instead of coming straight down, coming up, and that way you create a natural, you avoid the water coming down. And gosh, you know, there's all these drawbacks to these, these various methods because, well, what's the difference between a drop for water and a drop regularly? Um, we end up doing it this way, where most all of our drops will come down to a filter reg combo, and then these blocks have a little thing in it like so. So you can, if you open this bulb out here, you could, you know, drain water out like so. I don't know why I'm not getting pressure there, to be honest with you. Um, oh, it must have the system off. Um, the thing I don't like about this is it would be nicer to have just a straight drop and then come off from the side. So I think we, so that's how we did say this one where ran it straight down, manifold block, which I actually bought from McMaster was the best option to see. And then I've got uh, a straight drop here that I can use to bleed out uh, moisture if I need to. Last thing is we did a complete loop, but only one loop. And I got to give a shout out um, for, for recommending that folks. So it comes up here and it tees, goes all the way over, all the way down that wall to the far wall where you see the uh, heater and so forth, you know, then around and around, then back up this wall. But then that's the key point. I was going to join these in and I didn't. So it comes around here, right to here runs all the way down, back around the corner, and then back up to here. And that ended up being important and something I now do agree with since I understand it. Because if we had done an intersection up there, um, you know, and had those two come together, what could happen is if you're pulling air from just this room that I'm in, you could end up with kind of stale air on the other side. So by having one long loop, it forces your air to always flow through. We've had no problems with low spots or dead spots. Um, if you did, you could easily put in like a tank in the far corner back there. Or I'd always thought, you know, look, if we really get a new machine somewhere that needs a ton of air, you could do kind of a home run to it. So with that, folks, I hope you guys learned something. I hope you enjoyed it. If there's any questions or things we can answer, please let us know. Um, I'm kind of surprised it hasn't kicked on yet. Okay, I'm going to try to keep talking, and that way you can hear me talk at a normal level. And then I'm standing, geez, only a few feet from the compressor. So when it does come on, hopefully you can get as decent an idea as one can hope to understand. Is it loud? Is it quiet? What do you think of it? Do you like the color? Um, does anybody remember the, when my wife caught me taking this thing home in the Arby's parking lot? eating a sandwich at six o'clock 
while she drove by on her way from work and saw my pickup truck with a giant compressor in the back and she literally took a photo and texted it to me. It was, uh, it was actually pretty funny. I'm sure someone's gonna tell me, you need to get it off that pallet. You gotta get it off that pallet. Lots of people, including the folks that installed it, said totally fine. Good, so now it just kicked on. So I'm trying not to talk any louder. It's natural to want to talk a little bit louder because it does sound loud to me, but the truth is that if Jared were standing right next to me, he absolutely could hear me. Um, something about our building is that I think the roof in our building tends to carry the noise, so I actually need to kind of work on that. That has nothing to do with the compressor. Um, it's the same problem when Jared's out here running a four inch grinder grinding disc wheel i can hear it all the way in the other corner of the building which is not something i expected um, but with that folks there there is our rotary screw atlas copco compressor shout out to italy where i believe this thing is actually made kind of funny i don't even think um, atlas copco makes it um, anyways with that folks take care see you soon Folks from Air Technologies are here. Somehow they bought the domain aircompressors.com. Uh, so they're doing the first initial setup, which is actually more than I guess I thought. They're gonna hook up a muffler, do some tests, so they show us how to do uh, maintenance and so forth. And uh, hopefully we're here pretty soon. We'll see how quiet it is. They take this stuff seriously. Checking all, they got a whole procedure checklist they go through. Apparently, if you, it actually makes sense if you have a three-phase mo motor wired backwards somehow, it'll run it backwards, which after just a few minutes will destroy the compressor because the screws are running backwards, uh, which amongst other things means they're not getting any oil. Check the hook up here. It's a 208 three-phase here and a 40 amp uh, breaker, which meant number 10 wire. Here's the moment, folks. I trust it. So, Atlas Copco, uh, a GX5 compressor, motor drive, air cool, rotary screw compressor. They put a feature on it. You gotta make sure the rotation's right on three phase motor. When we turn it on, this should flip up. Got it. It's that quiet, folks. Circuit breaker, on off switch. Okay. Wrong. Interesting. So that just means the wiring is backwards? Three phase system, any two leads, you switch them and it rotates opposite. Yeah, way. but not a big deal basically. Right, quick. Yeah. Quick switch. So we Try it again. Oh, the muffler that's actually sealed, or yeah, the ball out. Yeah. Got it. Uh, oil level. Check the oil level when it's off after a few minutes. Okay. So okay. let it settle. Some of the oil drains out of the filter. Some of the oil drains out of the oil cooler. Yep. It's low. Is it low now? It's actually it drops quite a ways once it's running. It you can see it bouncing just a little. It's fine. But yep. when you shut it off, it'll rise because those uh, vessels, the filter and the cooler, will actually drain back to the sump. So here she is, Atlas Kafka, seven and a half horsepower rotary screw air compressor. Got her in last night. Breaking down the crate. She's gonna live right over there, uh, where you can see all that insulation for the new building. Here she is. I'm the uh, guy who shows up to pick up his own rotary screw compressor. Now they cut a couple hundred bucks off uh, for no freight. It's only an hour away. Uh, and of course I'm driving up here and I'm like, I probably should have taken my truck box out. And the tailgate does not close by about one inch. Um, I could take it out if I wanted to and put it right inside, but no big deal. We got to strap down, take it easy.